New here at Brothers RC is the Viterra Twin Hammers Kit. The sucker comes with no electronics, no paint, and in a very small box. The transmitter receiver is going to be a Flysky GT3C. Plugged in and charging. Ready to roll here in a minute. So sit back, enjoy the ride as we tear into this box and build the first kit here at Brothers RC. The parts bags are all easily labeled, A through G, and the instruction manual. And who doesn't like stickers? We'll put those away for right now. Page one. Registration. Spanish registration. Instructions of what everything is, grease, fill silicon oil, those sorts of things, cut and trim. And we begin. And something that Viterra does that not others have done, um, each bag has individual, each bag that is in each bag has um, numbers is when you're gonna use that. So A1 is the first parts that you're gonna use. And then if you notice, you have A11, A12, A13, well, sorry there, A13 and A14. So they kind of go in order and you're supposed to use every part in that bag until, um, that way you don't have any parts left. As you can see, we are getting into the transmission. Um, this is a two speed transmission. Um, so there's a lot of little pieces but as long as you go by what they say, you can do it, because I'm doing it, so I'm sure everyone else can do it. So the only problem is you get these really itty bitty little, little itty bitty E-clips. They're not very much fun to put on, I can tell you that much. And they like to shoot, so try to make sure you have a nice cover on your bench or someone else to put their hand over it in case it decides to fling off whenever you are putting it on there. We are doing a transmission check. Um, in on this transmission, we have the 20 turn axial motor. Uh, it's running a 31 tooth pinion right now. Uh, Viterra recommends a 26 or 28. I believe it's 28. Uh, we're gonna try to speed it up just a little bit since we're only running a 20 turn instead of the 15 turn that um, comes in the RTRs. Um, we were gonna run an AE5. ESC that we had laying around um, It's gone crazy. It just goes full throttle. So we went back to an AE2 ESC um, That works like it should so this is just a little test Make sure we have We got forward reverse, And the shifter works, but it's really hard to do with but with one hand so I won't do that right now but as far as that goes, and then we're running a HPI waterproof servo. It's like 208 grams, I believe, or ounces. some ounces. Um, so it's waterproof. We'll see how that does. Usually we run a Savix. Now the transmission assembly is complete. We move on to assembling the half shafts or the drive shafts of the truck. That's what we're working on right now. Well, Brad is. I'm just holding a camera. What do you got? So we're putting on, we put the ends on and we had to put a little, get this little spring pried up over top and it's help, supposed to be there to help keep everything where it needs to be. Looks easier than it should, it should be easier than it is, I think. Just so you all have a visual. So this look, looks kind of like a key ring. It is a retainer ring to hold in this shear pin there we go. onto the end of the drive shaft if that makes any sense so there you are 
Brad, Brad said he's got see. it. Here we go. A little bit of focus on it. It's right there. So that's first piece done. The next step is to put it on to the truck. The transmission, I mean. And it uses two set screws, not just one, like axials. I shouldn't have uh, put my dust cover on yet, and I can't turn the. <laughs> I can't turn it. But we'll make we'll make it work. I found it's easier to apply it to that and just hope that it stays on like it's supposed to. Get it started on there. And then make sure we are actually lined up. Yep. And then one more. These are little itty bitty set screws. We're popping the excess. There's the first check. Dun dun dun! Moved on to the next parts bag. So you may be saying, hey, yours doesn't look like that. As in having the shift servo put on there. Well, you caught me, it doesn't. The servo is in the mail and will be here tomorrow. So we're gonna skip that assembly step. Um, it's pretty self explanatory though to be able to do that. Um, so we're gonna go on to the next parts bag, which is parts bag B. Not C? No, not C. We gotta sing the alphabet to get the right letter sometimes. But we are on to parts bag B. So we are starting the assembly of the rear suspension. Um, first thing I did this time was since there's so many screws, there's eight of the 12 millimeters, two of the 14s, and two of the 16 millimeters. I went ahead and set them up on the bench. That way I made sure I was seeing things the way they should be seen and making sure I get the right lengths where they need to go. So that was my first step. I have just now mounted the servo, which is on page 32 of the book. Um, the first the page before that tells you how to put um, the servo together, basically. Um, it's pretty simple. And also, just in case you didn't know, servos in this kit are not included. As most kits, you don't have any electronics. But for some people, if you don't know that, it's a good thing to pay attention to. So, anyways, um, mounting it to the chassis plate right now, it goes on pretty simple. Um, there is um, beveled edges on the brackets for the servo that hold the servo. Um, as long as you pay attention before you put it on and don't put it on first without looking at those, um, you'll get it right the first time. It's just two of the 12 millimeter screws in the bottom that hold it on. And then you have a servo. We're making some progress now. Um, we are on the step where you mount the electronics. Um, as you can see here in the book, um, they're showing ESC right here, which is where we put it. Where the ESC goes right here and then that's where we put it. And then receiver uh, is going to go on top of the servo. So that's where it's at. Um, I may look at getting a waterproof box for it because uh, eventually I'll probably end up doing some bashing around and getting a little bit of water splashed on it and don't want that to go bad. So that's a future step. Um, the next step I have to do is get my cable management and get this stuff um, where I want it to be and that way it looks good and is not getting tangled and everything. So 
The next step in the book is to work on the sway bars. The sway bars are in fact a kit item. Um, the RTR does not come with those. So it's a plus to getting the kit. Um, so we'll see how much effect it has on the ha overall handling of the truck. Uh, but lots of little pieces when it comes to the sway bars. As you can see here in our little pile of goodies, those are very tiny. So be careful not to drop any or lose any because that would not be any fun. The right piece, which the book tells you how to make left and right and what they should look like, just so you have it the correct way when you go to put it together. So we have the left one, maybe, left, and right. Yep. Then that's going to mount right there. This piece here is held on by two small little brackets which are these right here it's two screws with Loctite and then a set screw in the very middle which puts the tension on this sway bar so it can't just go up and down it sets it where it needs to be which is straight out alrighty guys Looks like we have the, the sway bar brackets are on and holding the sway bar. Um, this does come with three different types of sway bars. There's a silver, a yellow, and a green. The yellow is the soft, silver is medium, and green is firm. Uh, I'm going with the silver. Can't hardly really see it. Um, but I figured starting out with the medium would be the best choice. And then I can always um, change depending on whether I think it's right or wrong. I also went ahead and attached the battery tray. It's only two screws. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, for just a fair warning, though, this is a very it is a very small battery tray. They mean small. Um, this is a Glacier 2600 30C um, that I, we had laying around. It is the right width, but the length is probably I don't know few centimeter a few centimeters probably a centimeter off maybe too long uh, so 10 millimeters or so off um, but with the velcro strap we're hoping that it should hold itself in place enough to run it till we can order the appropriate size batteries and I think after this step we go into the next parts bag which is C that's when we're going to start playing with the axles As you can see, we made a differential. It's pretty simple. Um, the hardest part of this whole step is getting those itty bitty little pins into this little hole. Um, when you push this together, you literally only have where that little line is sticking up from right that far. So if you have a good pair of needle nose pliers, or possibly even some little tweezers that we have some that came with a little screwdriver set that we got off of Amazon. Um, that was what I used to help get that in there. As far as I know, the kit was, um, I thought, it, from what I understood, it came with a 500,000 weight uh, gear oil to put in this differential. Um, but and as I got into the kit, I have not found any. I found shock oil, but that's it. So I put a little bit of oil in there, just some light stuff that we had around. Uh, I'm gonna see how it runs. As you can see, it's pretty loose right now. Um, but a benefit of the kit is it does come with the locker, which will eliminate um, all these uh, small beveled gears in there. 
Um, but it's if you use the locker, you're really not supposed to go at high speeds because it can cause damage to the drivetrain. Now, whether that's crucial or not, that can be up to debate. But so right now, I'm not using the locker. I'm going to keep it. I probably will end up using this, but I'm going to try to not use it first. Um, so that's this step that is on page 39. We're getting, we're getting through it. After C, we go on to building sh oh no. After we go to C, we have D coming up and that's going to be the rear axle housing. Um, bag E is all about shocks. That's fun. <laughs> and then bag F is the frames, the like the roll cage and all the panels for the truck. So we're winding down now. So um, page 39 is how to do this without the locker. Page 40 is how you build this with the locker. If I would have looked at the next page, I would have been able to tell you that from the get-go. But as I said, locker, we're gonna put it in this the extra part bin. All those extra parts in there are from the shifting servo, if you can see them, I think you can, uh, which is gonna come in the mail tomorrow. So we're building a little half shaft is what I would like to call it. This is a similar setup to one of the ones you built earlier on in the transmission. It's got the same setup. As you can see, a set screw, pin, and a spring to hold it all together. Um, as you can see, we're chugging along again. Um, what I have here is the spindle carrier assembly. Um, and this uses the front CV assembly. Um, you have already, if you're doing this project, you've already built several of these now. Um, it's the same setup as before. You drop that piece in, you slide this over, you push this little pin through and you tighten that set screw down and snap that little spring around this right there and you have it. So you've already done a few of those by now. This is where you use these. It goes into the um, C-Hub and this other uh, carrier assembly. It's really hard to see here. I'll start zooming in for you. So this is the C-Hub um, and it goes into this little carrier. Um, what's interesting about um, the Viterra versus what an axial build is, um, if you look down here, actually I'll show you, they use, um, instead of just doing a screw from the top, uh, instead of doing just a screw down to hold the carrier assembly, sorry, to hold the carrier to the C-hub, they use a pin and a set screw which holds that pin, this little set screw here, goes into the side and sits in that collar, if you can see it there, it sits in there and holds that pin. Um, this uh, alleviates the need to always be trying to tighten and keep those C-hubs tight. It keeps them the same consistency all the, all the time and you want it to fight it. Because I know I've lost a few screws on my axial rigs um, just because they get they got loose on the trail and I didn't notice it. So um, I like this, I like that a lot. Viterra did a good job. They did a lot of uh, um, R&D on that just to make sure they had a good design and they do. I am thoroughly pleased. So as you can see, they have the really, really small set screws. Um, these don't get Loctite for some reason. Uh, the book says they don't, so I did not put any on there. And if you notice this little symbol there on the book, that's the one where it's tight until snug, don't over tighten. Because if you over tighten it, it will strip the plastic and you will be in a world of hurt. <laughs> So after we get this done, we will come back to a video again and show you the f assembly of the whole front end because we are 
Coming along. Howdy. If you all are thinking, hey, this looks a little different than before, you're right. Um, originally, I had, I looked at the drawing wrong. And I had these flipped the other way so they were facing out instead of bowing in. And as I started looking at it, I, I looked and it didn't seem right. So I went back and look, looked at the drawings a little more. I'm like, yeah, I did that wrong. So I've changed those back the way they're supposed to be. Um, it's a pretty simple fix. Just had to pull those. There's two pins that hold these on. Just pulled that out, flipped them around. But since then, we've added in all of the links. Um, for the cantilever suspension right here and that's about it that took us a little while because those take a little while to get threaded on there um, they're not the most fun thing to do <laughs> um, what's up next is the front sway bar um, it mounts right in here it's pretty similar to the other one as far as I can tell right now, except the, the bend is different. The other ones had a different bend, but um, we'll see what I can do with that and we will give you an update once we get it in place. So, this is where we are going to leave you tonight with the Viterra Twin Hammers build. So far, so good. Had a couple little hiccups that we've already shown you in this video. Uh, this is our first kit build. It's going really well. It's This has been a great truck. Very easy to work on. Very fun to work on. Everything is laid out very, very well. As you can see, the bench is full of empty bags and tools and tires and wheels and the rest of the kit. So stay tuned for the next episode from us here at Brothers RC. Thanks.